It's obvious from looking at your CV that you never stopped working. You've always remained a working actor. But for younger people who've seen E.T. but have missed out on your other work, it's almost like you exploded back onto the scene when you met Mike Flanagan. Um, I know yeah. he's been building his brand for a while, but ever since Hill House came out, it's like every good horror film or show that comes out, he's he he seemingly has had some sort of hand in making. You have a unique perspective having worked so closely with him on so many projects. Talk to us a little bit about the man himself. When did you first hear about him? I met Mike in 2014 in a general meeting, but he was talking about this film that he was doing, uh, Ouija, Origin of Evil, uh, which is sort of a, a sequel, prequel to... Uh, a Blumhouse movie called Ouija, which I, I hadn't seen. I, I'm, you know, ironically, I'm not much of a horror fan. I don't know much about the horror world, but I met Mike and he said, I'm a big fan of your work and I want to cast you in this uh, as Father Tom, but I want to, I want to cast you in everything that I do. And I'm sitting here thinking, you know, I was about to fade into obscurity. You know, I was just probably a couple of years away from just kind of slipping off the edge of the known world. And here's this guy who wants to, like, say I'm his favorite actor and put me in everything. So I didn't believe him. You know, I thought he was just selling me some Hollywood line. But the part came through and I did it. And I had a blast working with him. And he was the most organized director I've ever worked with. You know, like everything is lined out. He's got a shot list that he's built sets around. So I was kind of taken aback by his enthusiasm and his uh, proficiency, I, I suppose. And then he kept good on his word and he kept feeding me these parts you know every few months i would get a call and he would say i got something do you want to do it and i had never experienced that before so it was kind of fun and it's been fun working with him because he never gives me a dull um a dull job i suppose i always have to either make something out of it or find something to um to do with it that that kind of sets it apart and as an actor that's been uh, a challenge and and a pleasure to work with characters like this over the years it's been fun hill house i mean my god that show felt like it came out of nowhere and then it just took netflix completely by storm is that how it happened for you as well? Like what you were talking about how kind of the role came about? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, Mike had told me, Mike was like, yeah, I want to cast you as a lead in this movie. And I said, well, Mike, the studio is never going to let you cast me as the lead. Well, uh, don't, don't be so sure. You know, then a few months later, you know, it's like, it's not the lead but I have this role for you that I think you're really going to like, and you can really do, you know? So, <laughs> uh, you know, it was a bit of a, a funny, like Hollywood shuffle, but I always, I always thought it was, I always thought it was admirable that Mike kept trying, you know? <laughs> I mean, I kid you not. I mean, it gave me so much unadulterated, uh, joy to see you killing it in that show. And I guess it just proved once again of what Spielberg saw in you all those years was correct, you know? <laughs> um, so to me, Mike Flanagan is, is one of the best directors working today. And so now you've kind of worked with uh, essentially in my mind, two Royals. How did their styles compare? What are their unique strengths when you set them, when you, I mean, where do they, where are they very similar and where are they different? I I think they're all very similar in um attention to and management of the story. You know, being able to bridge the gap between 
uh, audience and uh, I suppose the 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 inner voice of the characters. I think the great directors always have that in mind, working in conjunction, uh, which is which I think is difficult to do. You know, it's difficult to see the the piece as a whole before before it's assembled. What was it like working with so many child actors in The Haunting of Hill House? I mean, the Crane Kids, ha having been in their shoes. Well, I was blown away by how professional they all were and how, you know, well-trained they all were, you know, well-disciplined. I was you didn't so have to go worried. find them on their bikes? No, no, I know. <laughs> I, I, well, that's what I kept saying. I kept saying I, I wouldn't make it in today's world of child actors like these guys they're like you know they're like playing instruments and you know like heading up their social media empires and stuff you know it's like i was i was never i was never of that ilk you know i couldn't i couldn't do that but these guys were amazing because Violet McGraw, who uh, played young Nell, I had this two-page scene with her and she was six years old and I thought, oh man, this is going to be a slog. Um, you know, this little girl, you know, we'll have to shoot her stuff first and then I'll be there by myself probably doing the rest of, you know. She was so on it. She knew the scene better than I did. Uh, she never missed a beat she picked up her cues i mean she's five or six years old i couldn't believe it did any of them have any idea uh, of your background of your of your et pedigree yeah they all knew. they all knew and you know i i gave them all um i gave them all a gift an et related thing i think i gave them a a, a book about the making of et um, and signed it for them all as, you know, as kind of a, a starting gift. Now, now you said you were never a big fan of horror films before signing on to do Hill House. I've always wondered what it's got to be like to act in a horror film or show. How do you get yourself to a place where you can accurately portray the, the horror that your character has seen or felt. I mean, how do you how do you do that? Where does that where do you where especially if you don't come from that that genre? I guess where does that come from? Where no, do you draw that from? I don't. I I spend a lot of my time laughing on horror sets because you know usually like the first and second act you're building these incredibly intricate characters with you know backgrounds and worlds that they come from and you know they've got real struggles and then in the third act you just throw it all out the window <laughs> and do whatever illogical thing the script says you know to get to the end but you know it's it's kind of funny and it's ludicrous at times so um but i think it's also kind of gallows humor you know because you have to deal with a lot of macabre stuff so laughing about it kind of takes the sting out of it i suppose um you and timothy hutton play in this play the same character just one year younger and one older you both did a fantastic job of mimicking each other how did that work how did you guys devise that and how did we, that come about we hung out together for a total of about two days we went to the aquarium in Atlanta together. We had a, a rollicking good time and we just talked. And then the next thing you know, when we were on set, he was doing a little bit of me and I was doing a little bit of him and it all worked. I think he did more of me than I did of him because my, my stuff was at the beginning of the shooting schedule. So... He was on set a couple of times um, for scenes that I had done. And I saw in his body language, he, he stole some of my tics. So. 